Chavez strode the world, inspiration to all of us, fighting back against austerity and neoliberal economics in Europe, showed us there is a different and a better way of doing things. It's called socialism, it's called social justice, and it's something that Venezuela has made a big step towards. And I think Chavez is so important for Latin America, the Caribbean and the rest of the region because he showed another world is possible. He put helping the poor, raising living standards of the very poorest at the top of his agenda. It's so important for me that we don't look at Latin America as something that's just happening elsewhere, but it's something which, is, which gives us all hope. So I look forward to the development of Venezuela the efficiency of Venezuela in providing good services and decency for all the people of that country. Our solidarity is important, and the best form of solidarity is learning from it. There is an alternative. And he showed the region that it was possible to do things differently, economically, socially, and also politically, that you could stand up to the United States. The Chavez regime had the best results in fighting poverty and increasing, improving living standards of the very poorest of any regime in the region. And that's one reason why I particularly feel passionate about defending the, the revolution of Venezuela and the Chavez legacy. And the other thing, very mad about the rights of Venezuela. It's one of the reasons they dislike Chavez. It's not perhaps not the main reason, but one of the reasons. It's not just that he was a socialist. It's not just that he challenged their grip on power. But he came. I mean, he was, he's, his skin colour and his background, you know, he was not part of the European Latin American elite. And that is one of the reasons there was such visceral hatred. Ken Livingston, who was the mayor of London for eight years, and in that job he signed a deal to fuel London transport with oil from Venezuela and then was later appointed by Hugo Chavez as an advisor on urban affairs. They nationalised key sections of the economy. For example, they wanted to do a massive housing building programme. Uh, the cement industry wouldn't cooperate, so they just nationalised it. And on that basis, <laughs> have been able to start building housing in many of the, the, uh, the so-called the shanty towns, the barrios of Venezuela. La sociedad capitalista, ¿qué es lo que reina? La desigualdad. La desigualdad más irracional, salvaje. Y por tanto la injusticia, y por tanto la violencia social, la explotación del hombre por el hombre, como decía Carlos Marx. El reino de Dios aquí en la tierra es el socialismo. Amén. a la vida de un pueblo noble como el pueblo venezolano, que su único pecado es aspirar y soñar con vivir una nueva sociedad, con construir un modelo económico, social y político que trascienda el capitalismo, de un socialismo humanista, cristiano, bolivariano. Ahora tenemos una llamada, me dicen, desde Londres, desde Londres tenemos una llamada, de un amigo de Venezuela en contacto con Maduro desde Londres. Se trata de Jeremy Corbyn, parlamentario británico, militante y dirigente del Partido Laborista. Felicitaciones para ti, señor presidente, y para el todo el pueblo de Venezuela también. Gracias, Jeremy, por tu llamada, por tu saludo. Aprovecho. Esta llamada, bueno. The right wing and the mainstream media all over the Western world and the opponents of Venezuela's revolution are crying. They're saying the wheels are coming off, uh, that there's an, it's an economic and political basket case, 
There's no hope for a post-Chavez uh, Venezuela. And anyway, it's a dictatorial regime that is violently crushing uh, a wave of popular protest. Now, of course, that's very far from the reality. The truth is that the high oil prices have allowed the, the President Chavez to mask the fact that he has destroyed the economy. Uh, today, Venezuela's economy is essentially, essentially, deeply dependent on oil. That was always the case, but the, uh, under President Chavez, that has been taken to an extreme. The amount uh, uh, of job destruction that has taken place in Venezuela uh, in the private sector is uh, unprecedented. What's left of the private sector isn't creating jobs, it's fighting for survival. You know, the, the few companies that were producing in Venezuela have either gone to Colombia or Costa Rica, or they've just been closed down and they're, they're being imported from other, other countries. You know, I, I just sometimes wish that Chavez were to realize uh, how important it is to have companies and to have private sector in Venezuela. Until last year, working four jobs, I earned about $300 a month. This year, working the same four jobs, I only make $100, and this will keep diminishing as our currency devalues. Ephraim is a trauma surgeon working in Caracas's public hospitals. Free health care was one of the foundations of the Chavez regime. These are all the bandages we've got, six little rolls. And these here are made in China, very poor quality. It tears your skin off. Venezuela could grow most of its own food thanks to large expansion of fertile land. But through the years, most of its agriculture has been abandoned and other farms like this one have been expropriated by the government and production has collapsed. In the capital city, we uh, have a, a very uh, tough time uh, accessing uh, basic necessities, but the people uh, in the interior of the country, in the states, in the province, have it even worse. And uh, we're not just talking about um, um, medicine, we're not just talking about uh, basic things such as toilet paper. We're talking about food, and that's where the situation escalates. Tenemos comida, que lo los solucionen aquí lo con nuestra situación. Lo que estamos sufriendo es el pobre. Necesitamos medicina, comida, agua. It's my farewell party. I'm moving to the United States next week. And all my family and friends are here to, to say goodbye. And these farewell parties are quite common these days? Quite common, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, there was one week when I... I went to three in one week. You can still see glimpses of the old wealth that once divided Caracas into haves and have-nots. But it's fading fast. The revolution really is creating a more equal society in which almost everyone is poor. The economy shrank more than 10% last year. Prices rose by 800%. It just has gone worse. Now they say something that had never happened in the 20th century Venezuela, is that the extreme poverty is growing faster than poverty, which is something that never happened, that we know of it since we had official numbers had never happened. Una rebelión que han calificado algunos la rebelión de los ricos. Venezuela es el país eh, donde los ricos protestan y los pobres celebran su felicidad social. But make no mistake, this is a naked anti-democratic revolt that is concentrated in the wealthy white areas. As the Chavistas says, this is a revolt of the rich. 
that protest can be a defense of privilege. La gente en los barrios uh, todavía apoya la revolución. Ahorita, no. No. La mayoría no. No están de acuerdo con, con ese presidente ya la mayoría de gente. Uh, Ahí no quieren sacar, pero como el tipo, hay que estar con él a juro. Que ni siquiera ni, ni, ni deja que voten ni nada porque él sabe que va a perder. The military has become the main basis, the main pillar of support of the Chavismo regime. That is very important for everyone to know. Uh, what we're seeing, even though Mr. Maduro is a civilian, is basically a military government. There is a different and a better way of doing things. It's called socialism, it's called social justice, and it's something that Venezuela has made a big step towards. And it's also clear that Hugo Chavez's legacy is a living force, not only in Venezuela, but across Latin America and beyond, with powerful lessons for the politics of the future for us all. Thanks very much.